So today we're making center bearings. Okay, so now if you can see what I'm doing here, I'll try to get one of these that has the, the writing on it. This one I thought did. Yes, this one here. You see, I just kind of found the center and I drilled two holes on the top. Now what I'll do on these holes on the top here, they go clear down through past this, okay? Now I'll cut this in half right here, like so, all right? Then I will tap these holes. Well, I'll probably do that first. I'll tap the holes first and I'll cut this in half. Then I'll bolt it back together again with the, some screws that I had retapped. And then I will bore out the center here for my bronze bushing. Now the bronze bushing, the center of the hole has to be 12 millimeter. The, uh, the outer is whatever they come. <laughs> Cause I ordered some and um, I don't know what they're going to do, but, you know, what sizes, how thickness they say they'll be until I actually get it. And then I'll cut the center bearing in half, and then I will bolt it all together. I will bore out the bronze bushings to kind of made up the difference of where I cut it. And then I will tap and drill holes in the side here so I can bolt it from the outside of the block in. So that's where I'm at now. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. Double Deuce here. Well, I made a center bearing support today for the crankshaft. Um, now there's some good and bad things about this. Um, the way I made mine was I have it bolted from underneath and then this here is going to bolt to the oil pan instead of through the block. Um, not a lot of room to mess around here. Um, I know you could probably go straight through everything and mount it to the uh, the underside of the water jacket in there. But I wanted to kind of keep everything loose. And I kind of wanted to experiment with it. And I'll show you why. So as you can see, it's a two-piece, and now the center of the of your main bearing in there is around uh, 12 millimeters in diameter. Um, so I made this one just a little loose, so it's got a little bit of play in it. And here's why I wanted to do that. Now watch how this thing goes up and down. You see it moving around in there? I'm going to put my finger on it. Now watch how it goes up and down. Down, up, and down. Up and down. So that tells me there's no way we're going to be able to um, put a, um, a center bearing in here unless it's got a lot of slop in it. Which is still probably better than nothing. Now... This here is a brand new crankshaft that I installed in here because I thought maybe, because this in here was a used one, I thought maybe this was bent. But as you can see from their crankshaft grinding video, they just sit there and they just bring in the wheel and chop it, you know, and grind it to where it needs to be. And uh, they rough them out. So, and then they, they probably fine tune the journals and polish them. So either this crank's going to need sent out and have that polished and uh, or find a machinist that's willing to do some of this stuff because as you can see from my intro, I'm drilling everything with a drill press and you know the seat of my pants right now. But, uh, but like I say, it's worth a try of you know something. Now, on my second um hold up today it's all about hold ups and failures today 
I don't know. I bought two of these these spark units, and they're both junk. They don't work. I bought two distributors with the spark units and the Hall Effect sensors, and they don't work. They did work, so I got two of them that don't work now, and I've changed the Hall Effect sensors. I've got more sensors coming. Um, I also bought. Like they say, uh, another box, I got that coming. But here's the way they're supposed to work. Correct me if I'm wrong. Your input voltage, okay, would be coming through here. This is your ground that goes to your engine, and this is your spark lead. Now, where these plug into the Hall Effect sensor, there's three wires. There is a power wire which will take 6 to 10 volts according to this. There is a ground and there is a signal wire. Now you see I cut that signal wire because from what I read online the voltage comes in through your sensor. I'll show you here. It, the voltage comes in the red wire Okay, your 6 to 10 volts comes in there. But this should only be around 5 volts, they say, to come through this sensor. So when I checked it, it's almost 6. Um, and when the magnet crosses it, it'll send a signal of voltage, because it connects the switch inside momentarily, and sends it back through the white wire to your ignition box so on my ignition box when I plug it in I got the same amount of voltage coming through the red as I do coming out of this so I've even tried to eliminate this I cut this wire hook the center back up like so and I had to I had my power coming in, I ran a magnet across the, uh, the Hall Effect sensor, and it sent no signal back. But this has got a signal. <laughs> it's got the same amount of voltage, so I don't know if there's supposed to be voltage in this, because if it's, if it's a signal, it should come from here down back to the box to trigger the spark. So I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I'm kind of lost there. Um, I noticed it worked for a short time and then stopped. So I got the other one out. It worked for a short time and it stopped. So I don't know. I did order another. I bought one um, for the from Toyin. Believe it or not, I found one online. It's a single one, and it has everything involved in it with the Hall Effect sensor and all that stuff. And I want to check. I want to try that to see if that's my problem. If it is, these boxes are junk. Um, and the Hall effects are no good either, so I don't know. I'm, I'm stumped. But anyway, that's, that's where I am. So today was a kind of a big waste of a day. I mean, I did get this made and, um, you know, try it out. And then, like I say, it was b bouncing up and down like crazy because the center, the center journal's not around. And then I messed with that today, um... So it was just kind of a, that's one of those days you'll have in a hobby. But maybe tomorrow will be better. So anyways, you guys uh, take care and I'll be back with some more content. Hopefully there's some positive that comes out of some of this stuff. Whether it's, uh, you know, making the, the spark unit for the, uh, the L400 here. Or making a center bearing for the L400. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But... All right, guys, have a good one. Later.